Hi all, this is Ryan. Today I had a very very busy day after only four hours of sleep, and I was just waiting for the day to end, but it ended in the most incredible way possible. I was privileged enough to have a very very reputed and experienced personality on my podcast, Mr. Vin Blaine. He has spent over fifty years just in football. and he's held some incredible positions he's been a national team women's national team head coach he's been the technical director of two countries he's been a coach educator he still is he's uh, a true student of the game which you're going to know after listening to the podcast he has he's just done some incredible things in football it's the list is endless and what's special here is that it's this podcast is going to be highly informative so i suggest you either bring your pen and paper out or you take notes on your phone because it's going to be a a, a phenomenal listen after you hopefully li- go through the entire video listen to the entire entire podcast you drop your comment with your thoughts and it's going to be of it's going to be it's just incredible for every coach that's around so enjoy listening senior coach in the game mr mr i call him mr blaine he's mr vin blaine very very senior he's had some great accolades in coaching he has worked with a national team he has been a coach educator he's had a role with fifa he's done basically a lot of a lot of ambitions that junior coaches have he's done it already so it gets me gives me delightful pleasure to welcome mr blaine how are you doing uh ran great to be here man awesome so let's uh, let's get going then so okay. go ahead go, go right ahead mr start shooting awesome so um the typical question that i ask everyone according to you what what is an ideal coach and what does your typical session look like well the ideal coach is kind of we should talking from a youth level you know uh, i think that's where the real coaching starts you know cuz that's when you have to kind of get to understand the player themselves how you how you handle them the relationship between the coach and the player is important there and um to know that the higher up you go you know the more difficult that relationship can become because you now we're talking about winning you know the, the coach has to win the players have, uh, uh, have to win too. so that's that's uh, that makes it difficult but the ideal coach is really basically to understand your players know that you um have an understanding of um training method methodology uh and also um how you how you develop that you know now now you have, you have um what we call it, we call it but it is as methodology how you approach your coaching sessions you know um how you how you really go about developing players at different levels those are things that you have to understand how you and one of the main 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 um point here should be of communication you know you can have all those things together around but if with lack of communication is one of the real something that really turns off um, players how you assess players how you view them in a, in a session or you separate the different levels that are in one session you know that the different the different development levels you know that's something that i think that coaches have to really understand and we as coaches have to understand and basically we are coming from sometimes we, we start off just coaching from experience is not any, we have not done any formal education as yet and i guess we talk about that down down there you know um but that is one of the main things that we are, i think that would make a make your not a good coach but maybe maybe a, a coach now that can develop into a better coach with every at the different levels i agree i think the communication part you mentioned is so so important because we are working with human beings at the end of the day yes so mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. now what i want to understand is uh, you're currently working as a director of soccer with village elite soccer academy now you mm-hmm. have as i mentioned in the introduction you've had some very powerful roles you've been a women's national team head coach you've been in coach education you've been a president of a coaches association and a technical expert for fifa so how would you describe your football journey so far 
Well, football journey started way back, you know. Uh, I, I, well, I started my coaching journey a little later because I was more concentrated on um, the administrative side of things. And I never even thought about coaching, being a coach, to be honest with you, never did. It came about when I was living in, in, in Florida and I was invited to Jamaica to um, take charge of a, a coaching uh, program at a, high, at a high school. Uh, never, they never had a program. I, they did have a program, but it was mainly for, for boys. They never had a female program. And I thought, I think that that uh, my then wife, who worked at the school, um, sort of a, mentioned my name. I don't know why she did, but <laughs> she mentioned my name so I could come and take over the, um, the, the, the program. And I did. I did just that. So my first start in, in, is in Jamaica. Uh, officially as a, as a coach. Now I started coaching just from experience, my playing days at school and, and my 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 uh, exposure to coaches and coaching, you know. So I started there, then I moved from there to uh, a high school, another high school, female. Mm -hmm. So my my thing started, my 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 um my journey started that way, you know, and um then it moved on to club. I was one of the founders of Harbourview Football Club in Jamaica. A very uh, one of the one of the top clubs in Jamaica. And I, I happened to be at a game and saw the girls' team from Harbourview playing against a university that I was help. I was assistant coach to. And I realized that they needed they needed good help, real help. You know, the score at the time was I think they got sixteen zero. From the, from the university. And I said, I know these girls can do better. So I decided being, um, being, being away from the club for a bit, because I, 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 after the club was founded, I went to the US to live. So coming back, I wasn't a part of the program then, but then they asked me, one of the executives from the club asked me if I could come in and, and, um, and take over the program, which I did. And that is where my journey started actually. So I started coaching at Harbour View, uh, football club, girls, not boys, and uh, did did quite well. You know, I I, I came away with um after the first year I joined, we moved from sixteen love to be giving teams three one and three love. So there was a there was a some some improvement there. So that it really started there. I went on to coach university. I coached university at Westin for ten years, their female program, and then I was invited to come on board with the Jamaica national um, team program. So I was in charge of the women's program in Jeff for, for some time. And then I moved on to coaching my, my the boy, the, the senior men's team at Harbourview, which I won in the first year I, I coached, I won the Premier League. And that's where, I mean, the, the journey continues from then. Well, I mean, uh, your journey, I would say it's very, um, a lot of coaches would resonate with such a journey because from what I understand, you didn't come in as an international player because it's much easier for, for people that route. Right. So I think, yes, if, mm -hmm. if one has the resilience that you have and you have had, which we will cover because you're still working at this age, uh, it's very interesting. Uh, we will definitely cover that. Uh, now... See, I come from India. Now, India is a big country. It's uh, known to be a powerful country. But when it comes to football, it's not exactly known to be big and powerful. So I'm going to pick your brains just to see for anyone who's important in Indian football to just, you know, try and steal a few ideas. So you've, you've been the technical director of not one but two nations of Jamaica as well as Granada. So um, it's believed that you have played a big role in executive, uh, executing development strategies. So can you give us some examples, some good examples that probably other federations can use? I think paying attention to development at a young age. You know, I think we, most federations concentrate, but even in my region, where, I, where I'm from, within the Caribbean, I think we paid a lot of attention to the senior men's program. Now we're looking at, Jamaica did well with the girls, so I, I, we're looking at the senior girls program, right, female program. I think that the, the, the associations need to know more concentrate on the grassroots program and the development of grassroots 
because it is noted that without grassroots, you're, you, you, you don't have a program. You know, grassroots is a base, is a foundation. And I refer to you building a foundation, right? Mm -hmm. Just that like building a house. If you have a proper foundation, after you set the house on top of that foundation, if it's not a good foundation, you're going to have cracks all over. You know, you're going to have the building start shifting. So, I, and it's the same thing with, 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 with football or soccer, some people might call it, who might be listening in. Um, you must have a good foundation to build your, 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 your program. Right? And I think we have lost that thought, that, 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 that approach. I think some of the some of the um, associations believe that the the, the premier um, competition, which is the men's FIFA uh, World Cup um, de development program, is is it. So I think if I think my advice would be to start with the Lord, get some good coaches at the under fifteen, under seventeen, under twenty levels, and follow your 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 the model of the senior team, meaning that. You have a coach in place for three years, four years. He, he's playing with a different with a coaching model. You have to know, say, you, you know, not copy the, but at the junior level, you must have the kids start training in that way because when they come, they can transition right into your under 23, your under 20, or your senior program. I think that's lost in some federations. I'm not sure if all does it. Some doesn't. I know that I had the same problem in Jamaica. When I went to Grenada, it was the same thing. You know, I think everybody wants to. You bring a coach for the under 15, he coach was in whichever way he wants to coach. On the 17, does the same thing. Senior team comes in with an overseas coach that brings his own ideas to how the team must play. But but the the base that he's drawing from, he has to now train them in, in his way. Even at the highest level for your transition from the under 20 to senior team. And the senior team the under 20 players come in with a different methodology, different idea, no um, no concept of what his um, foot training model is all about. You know, so I think that's one of the things that I would really, really recommend that we look at how we develop players from the, from the grassroots level. And grassroots to some people mean 15 year old. You know, it doesn't, doesn't matter what your grassroots means, but you start there at that, at that um, level and you work up to the senior level. Well, it is that uh, connect that you're talking about, the consistency, and th that'll definitely grow into big things. And also, you are huge on coach education. You're, you're an educator yourself. You've been involved for years. So what ideas can Federation steal in terms of coach education? Some best practices. Yeah. what All the federations right now have formal, formal um, education, right? They, 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 they do formal presentations. And um, that is something that is important. You know, formal, formal coaching education is important. However, I find that the difficulty that most face is that, and it's self-imposed because anything that the Federation wants to do, they can do. But they do have to have a development process, a pathway. Right? A development pathway is important. Now, you have in, in the Caribbean and in the, UK, in, the, in the US, you have the, the, their concept of A and B, not A, but concept of C and B license. But my problem, um, Ryan, is that when we leave, when we do those courses or when they, when, when they are delivered, there is no CPD following, the coaching professional development. There's no coaching professional development. So the coaches finish a course. They did a, they did a basic course. But what do they do to make, ensure that when they get to the next level, they are ready, right? So I, I think that's one of the areas that we are we, we're weak in, you know. Um, and this can be this can be this can be done, you know. In in the we have, we have a thing called mediated mediated learning, which I which I conduct with, with with FIFA as a FIFA expert as a part an area that that comes into effect when we when we are um, training coach educators. Right, and we have to differentiate this approach. Because in immediate learning, you have the formal, and you have the informal. Right, the formal is what when we do that, like, you have for A license, you have for B license. That's a formal thing that is that, that is directed by by you have for and the, and the, and the um it, the, the, the deliver, delivered methods, yeah. the deliver methods. You choose the content. They choose the content. So that's a formal way of of looking at it. 
then, then you have what we call the unmediated learning, which is like you can observe, the, the coaches can be observing other coaches, right? It's an informal way, right? They can, they can be observing other coaches that are maybe more experienced than them, and they learn that way, right? Now, then you have the, the one that you call it, you said, not incidental learning. Incidental learning is not something that you really plan for. You, it just it, it, you're in an environment where coaching education something is being done, just like this. For instance, I might be speaking about mediated learning, unmediated learning, and somebody is, is getting an education from it who never knew these terminologies. I am right? for sure. So, yeah, and so this is incidental learning for you, and I think that we have to open up the federations have to open up those avenues for coaches to to learn from. And coaches themselves must step away from not wanting to learn from other coaches. You know, I myself, when I coach the Premier League, I even listen to the fans behind me sometimes saying some things. And trust me, some of them know exactly what's happening in the game. They might not be coaches, but they have followed the game so long, they, can, they are making comments that you, you're picking up from behind you. And to me, that's a part of incidental learning. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, so I think that's what we need we need to do um, in, in, in the associations. And um, the, the coaches have to be open for that. And but but led by the led by the associations. You can't just bring in a, a, a coaching license into your uh, into your association or federation and not having other learning environment for the for, for the coaches. How do how do they progress from there? In the, in, the, in the UK and in other parts of Europe, you have CPDs. So in order to keep your license, you have to do so many points, you have to get so many points with CPDs to move on. It's not so in the Caribbean, right? As far as I know now, you know, I was a CONCLAF coaching education, educator, right? I, I, I worked at CONCLAF um, presenting courses. And I wonder when we leave, what happens after? And I know definitely in Jamaica, it, 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 it's like that in Jamaica where I'm from. They do a B, they do a B license or a C license with their federation, and there's no there's no follow-up. There's nothing after to say that. Let us do something for these um, coaches. You can do workshops. That's a part of the informal um, uh, unmediated learning. You can do workshops. You can do you know things like that to get them. You, you know, the informal education in that do workshops. That sometimes it's the coaches who, 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 who ask present what they want to to, to, um, to learn. Well, I mean, I can vouch for one thing, which is that you definitely practice what you preach because you have been taking, uh, you have been on courses with the MBP school, MBP school of coaches. Now, they have a big yeah. reputation. I have inquired. I find it very expensive. But uh, can you tell me, because since you've been there firsthand, can you please tell me as a customer of MBP, what's the entire experience like? Any What makes it unique, if at all? I find that I, I did the course because I really wanted to be at a level where I can speak to other coaches under me who I can educate. I believe coaching education is not so much about the, 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 it's more about the environment, I believe. And just to get back to MVP, MVP, uh, the course that I did was a Master's of High Performance Football that took you through the fundamentals of the position in the game, you know, how you approach the game. It led up to my my um, my, my game model, basically. But it, it taught me everything I would need to know how to observe uh, in a game. Part of, it, part of the test that I had to do um, part of the online test that I had to do is, is look at a clip and pick and, and 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 see what's wrong, what's okay about the fundamental or not. And it, I, had to, I had to do it in a, I had to do that in like 20 seconds, 22 seconds, not minutes, you know. I, I'm sorry, you did, you did the entire thing in 20 minutes, the entire course in 20 minutes. So each video that I have to observe Maybe I could, I can't take um, three minutes. I have to look at the observation and pick up what the problem is right away. That was something that I that made me understand. You know, it brought me to know how to observe the game, look at the different fundamentals of the, of the different positions. I think it was one of the best coach, courses I've ever done in, in my entire life. 
and then to culminate and uh, to be in Barcelona for for um, a week and a half to do the to go through everything again. So that was it. Took me nine months. It, it's expensive. You're right. It, ex, it, is, it is expensive, but you can call the school and they'll they'll, they'll make a payment arrangement for you. Right? I really wish it was cheaper because uh, that the course you named is exactly the one I was inquiring for. But anyways, yeah. uh, you know, since you've given so many valid points about developing uh, a nation's football as well as developing coach education, I think it's just a good sequence to ask you. So I don't believe that in India, the women's game has developed too much. Whereas you have been a head coach, you have been a head coach of a women's team. So I think it's best to, you know, ask you this question. How can a nation develop their women's game? Opportunities that they give to the men. They've seen a team or the boys, I should say, just, just, just overall boys and men's game should be now offered to the, the, the female players. And, and we have to take in consideration, Ryan, that female players are not exposed to the game as quickly as the boys are. Yeah. You might have a one or two girls in a community that um, might be out there in an environment where her brother is playing and she decides to go take a run and realize that she can play. Um, right now, I'm, I'm talking to a, a young lady from your, your country, India, who try, is trying to develop game and she actually is in spain right now you know she she she's doing her masters and she's in spain but she she has a foundation that wants to help girls back home in india so i, I i'm kind of mentoring her online helping her to, to to achieve this and um and so we need more of that from the from the standpoint of the associations i don't think and no disrespect to them, but it's my this is my opinion. I don't think they they give them out of respect to the female game that they should, that they should and they should because FIFA is putting a lot of money into the women's game, right? But in Jamaica, years ago in Jamaica, we had like forty something schools, high schools, girls' high school playing playing the game, and uh, in the competition, they had they are good a good sponsor, and also. The finals of that game used to be played at a national stadium. Semi-finals and finals used to be played at the national stadium. That's wow. no longer in effect. So instead of rising, we are falling, you know, and we are getting money, more money is towards um, women's football. So we need to ensure that we give much attention to it, you know, make sure we have a proper uh, league, right, and proper coaching surrounding it. So the organization around the game is is lacking for the for the women. You have under 15 boys, under 17 boys, under 30, and you have them in different areas. And it, it's not so much for uh, for in Jamaica. Jamaica just Jamaica went to two wins World Cup. But there's no there, there's no found there's no uh foundation, there's not a base there anymore where the players are coming through. So I think that uh, when I was in um in Grenada. I, and I forgive the president at the time, um, you know, all the food is there. I went there, I went to Grenada in December 2017. I started, I did a, a scouting program with, with the fine girls. To be honest, Ryan, maybe about two girls could pass the ball. Oh. But you know how we developed that team? We, we trained from that to December, we trained every single week. Up to the August 2018, where we're going to be entering the the, the Congo um, Championships on the 15 Champions. You know what happened to those that team? Those girls went to the finals. The same girls who couldn't pass a ball. Until we decide to do that in all the federations, we can't wait. The, 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 the way it goes now, Ryan, is that we wait until three months out of the competition time to start training. Right. Can't work. They'll never work. And don't believe the three months means you 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 are you are um, trained that time because you're only going to weekends because the girls are in school. So you can multiply how many weekends you get in before the competition. We're in USA, Mexico, Canada, Panama, or Costa Rica. All those teams that have been training for a year, for months, sometimes two years prior. Yeah. So on, that's the only way we're going to develop the, the game, the women's game. 
you have stated something that's so simple yet uh, simple effective but uh, i guess yeah we are too busy giving lip service to the women's game and that's why we don't really do things like this for example i'm sure right. if it's a men's team they would also train every single week but then the people aren't really that bothered so but yeah amazing point uh -huh. i ran i'm not knocking my country i'm not, not knocking my country it happens all over the world at the, at the, at the smaller federations you know it happens in just about everywhere where i went in the caribbean it, that's that's the case Right. And I've heard other nations um, crying out too, you know. So, if you're serious about women's game, you can you 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 can and um, you can go and make sure you have the right process, the right pathway for the for the players. I can resonate with this so much. So now, um, you know, since you've given so many amazing, phenomenal points uh, to do with the more of the macro level stuff, most of the people who are going to watch this video are coaches. So what is your advice to any young coach if they are starting off their journey? How, what did you do? Or, you know, what, what is your advice in general for them to succeed long term? Well, the first thing I always tell coaches, you know, is that everything they do must come with an open mind. And I read something a long time ago, and I like to say every time I talk about um, this open mind, it's that your mind has to be like a parachute. It works best when it's open. Yeah. Think about that. Yeah. I read that some years ago. I can't say who it is. I apologize to who came up with that, but I, I, I always have made that my, my 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 motto when I talk to coaches. Always approach with an open mind. And because a lot of coaches come into an a, a, a formal environment thinking they know, right? If you learn one thing, if you learn one thing in a coaching course, that's more than you knew when you came in, right? And it's important that we, we look at it that way. They have to know who their skills, know the methodologies, know principles of play, all those, anything that has to do with coaching. Read, read, read. Doesn't matter. A lot of people believe I only can follow what what, what uh, France is doing, or we can follow what England is doing, and you know, no, any, always get information from different um, uh, different countries or you know, um, Europe, Europe, America, anywhere. Right. Secondly, ensure that your approach to it is that you, you you want to coach. Why? First, ask the question: Why do I want to coach? You know, if is it for it has to be to develop players. Right? Is it to win? Because all those come in different in different areas that you have to look at. But the most important thing you have to love what you do. If you're not loving as a, if you're not loving as a coach, it doesn't make sense. You take it up and you just want to shout and you know, as I said at the beginning, that your relationship with the players play a great part in how you how you how you go about your business as a coach. And and yet you, you, you must educate yourself. We spoke about the different education uh, pathway just a while ago. And I think that's what they have to do. Experience helps, experience helps, but your pathway and how you do your formal education and your informal education and your incidental learning, that's all that's to come, come into your play. This simple thing of asking yourself why you co why you want to coach. I mean, that's something I did not do. It's such a such a simple yet powerful tool again. So I think this was a mm -hmm. real brilliant chat. And before I let you go, there's something that's football, non-football related. I'm really impressed, really proud. I, I, I'd say I'm amazed that at this age, at the age that you're at, you're still going strong, you're working. What's the secret and what's your what's the what's your future plan from here on? My future plan is to continue doing what I'm doing. I like to. Uh, I was with three countries. I started with Jamaica as technical director. I went on to, to Grenada as a technical director. And, then, and I ended up at um, U.S. Virgin Islands as their coaching, uh, their, 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 develop, their director of coach, their director of football and coaching education. Um, that's my, that's where my passion is and also coaching. I recently took a break and, and started doing um one-on-one -on -one training sessions. Never knew I would have enjoyed it that much, but it's something that I encourage every single association to start doing more of. 
you know, because the players, when the players come to training, you can't pay much attention to each player. But if you have a system where you have one-on-one -on -one training to develop your technical ability, their their, their tactical ability, you know, um, their game intelligence, you know, and, and resilience, I think things like that will help. Um, my job is my my role is to keep going. I took I started, I'm in my seventies, yeah, and I started. I took the coaching course with uh, with MDP because I figured it's something learning never stops. Learning never stops for me, and it should never stop for, for coaches. Never believe that you have an A license and that's it. Never believe you have a B license and that's it. You know, you have to look to further education. I'm still learning. I learn from every I be, when I do these um when I do these these coach education programs with FIFA and I'm delivering and I have other other coach uh, I have other technical experts with me. I'm learning every time, every time they're 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 they're, they're delivering. I am learning. I'm learning. You know, we just did, we just did one. How can I like, learn? You learn, you're learning from people who are there before you and in a different environment. You know, they're learning, they've been to different countries and getting, you know, that that's something that's important. You know, so I am quite, I'm quite um, I mean, I'm not, I can't see myself stopping now. You know, sorry to sorry um, to interrupt. I'm, how many, how many years have you had in the game? In oh, a lot. I, I I played at high school level. I, I I coach at club level. I think I, I should say about easily, easily 50 years. Easily 50 wow. years. So now this you is know, another... and, and probably more more. If I if I talk about my school, it, it will be more. So I you think know. this is a very, very powerful message that you have actually spent half a century in football and you still believe that there's something to learn. So I think this is a lot of things got to learn for me. With all these new new things that are coming in now, we know the different, you know, before. Even a simple thing as 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 what is the importance of of like a, um, a psychologist yeah. in your team, you know, in 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 my country when we talk about psychologists, we're talking about people who are crazy, so to have them talk to them, you know, yeah. so those areas, uh, you know, it, it it is it is periodization. When I when I was when I was playing ball in the early sixties, and when you think about my coach is never going to about periodization, whether we were doing it or not, right. informally and not knowing that's what it's all about. Yeah, you know, we, th those are things you learn as you go along, right? As I told you, fundamentals of each position on the field, defensive and offensive fundamentals of each position on the field. Sometimes some coaches don't know, don't, don't look at it that way. Right. They may separate it. But they were concentrated on the, that, that, that fun, those fundamentals. So I am learning every day. I'm still learning. I go. I do football learning every single day. I read. You know anything I see do with with football, I I, I go right ahead and and and, and um, check it out. Because the only way uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna... Yeah, I mean this conversation has not been as lengthy as usual podcasts, but the I would say the quality has been so much. You know, it's more of quality over quantity. It's really enlightening. And I would like to say a big thank you to you for taking time out. I'm not sure what the time zone is like or what your daily schedule is like, but it's really nice that you have the passion to, you know, give to give your time to try and help coaches listening around. So yes, big thank you to you. Well, my pleasure, Ryan. My pleasure. Yes, wonderful. So I hope that I get to chat with you again. And for all the all the viewers on YouTube, whether you're a coach, whether you're a player aspiring to be a coach, whether you're a coach educator, whether you're a technical director, this conversation is going to probably be as good as a blueprint for for setting your early steps into into your role. Thank you so much, Mr. Blaine. I will take good care now. Thank you.